calling to order and we have all the members present and uh, we have uh, minutes from the last meeting. Uh, those were circulated. Are there any comments about them? June, do you have anything to say about them? Or? Um, I, I had a couple of questions. I was not sure about the date of the tour. Was it the following Tuesday on the 22nd? Ooh. And the other question I had was uh, whether both Margaret and Mary were present at our last meeting. I know yes. uh, they were both present. They were. If they were both present, then I will add uh, Mary to the attendance. The, the yeah, bullet house scary. tour was the bullet house tour was Monday the twenty first at noon. So it was the same day as the selectmen's it meeting. It was. It was the okay. All yeah. right. So I'll change that then. Yeah. I think we had two. Uh, we had one date and then we changed to the next week. So that's why there was some confusion. If there are no other comments, is there a motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motion received and second. Second. Anything further be said? Uh, so the minutes would be approved with the with that date added that uh, we just agreed on. Do you want me also to add Mary to the attendance? Because I think I just have the. Yes, because I while she wasn't participating in the meeting all the time, there were a couple of times that she did. And okay. You know, and so, uh, my answer is that yes. Um, if not, I'll ask you to vote. Uh, egg or I? June I. Karen, I. Blaine, I. So that's a unanimous vote in favor, and we're all set for the minute. Um, our top piece of business today, of course, is about the HVAC. Um, Sounds good. And oh, here's, here's Margaret joining us. Huh. Okay. Um, we've. Uh, I sent out an email last night with my proposal, which was to go with the smaller system, the original system we'd planned, and with a with the town money that remains in the town hall account plus uh, a gift through the Historical Society of, from a donor, uh, the roughly 1500 that is needed to make the difference, or the 1400 that's needed to make the difference. And that that would then, if, with a with a vote of the Historical Society, which we'll get this week somehow, I'm thinking about doing that electronically, but I'll, I'll, talk, to you, I'll talk to you, June, and, and board people about that um and um that that would give us the money to go ahead with that system and that we could do it without uh without much more delay um if people really want to go for the other system we still have from 2600 dollars more which if it can be found someplace um we could do uh, but we need to uh, we need to do this. It's, I, I'm just we're going to be back in the winter trying to move, and I'm I'm not happy with that. So I'd like us to like us to act quickly. If there's twenty eight hundred twenty six hundred dollars sitting somewhere in somebody's account in the town, that would make the difference. We could do it that way. If there's some other source, we could do it. We can consider it.
Somebody else want to talk? Well, I sent out a, um, an email on the, in October, early October, um, yeah. October 4th. And um, got a good response from the um, highway superintendent. Um, and I think you all received his response, his first response. Being unable to attend the next historical commission meeting, he'd like to comment through email. And he said, I'm going to recommend again that, which he had, he had already said at uh, the Sluckman's meeting. I'm going to recommend again that the HVAC system be a split system supplied and installed by Northboro Oil. Not only is it, in my opinion, uh, a better product, but Northboro Oil has a tremendously positive work history with the town. I realize it is more money and I am not one to spend where it is not warranted, but I feel strongly that this would be the correct decision. And after all the back and forth, um, there's been another email this morning. Okay, uh, and I don't know if you read all the emails back and forth. Margaret um, was asking about, you know, which unit uh, had AC and whatnot. Okay, so the highway department, uh, excuse me, Dave Smith of the highway department responded this morning. The concept of a split system that does heat and, a and AC is to condition the air. When heat is called for, heat is sent to the occupied space. When cooling is required, chilled air is sent to the occupied space. When the conditioned air is circulated, moisture is removed from the air that is circulated. No dehumidifier is required. And, um, you know, AC is not a luxury, okay, in this day and age. That building is very tight, Barry. And you're providing, uh, once, we, once we move things into the building that are organic um, with just heat, okay, and no conditioning of the air, okay, it's ripe for mold, mildew, mushrooms. You know, you, you're providing a, uh, perfect conditions for things to go wrong with the collection. That uh, the building is very tight. It, need, it needs to breathe. As far as I know, both of these systems are heat pumps that do exactly the same thing. It's just a matter of how some aspects of it is done. Uh, the, the I believe split. both of them are capable of dehumidification if that's in order. The and split system. The split system provides that. It will remove. I believe the other one does too. No, it's just a heat. Just a heat source. Just Here we go again. All right. I think that's absolute baloney. Margaret, um, you've, had your, you've had your response from David that it is just a heat source. Uh, I, I honestly do not know if either of them, if either of the systems provide air conditioning because that's what I have struggled with, the specifications for these systems. I have unit numbers, model numbers, but I don't understand what the systems actually provide. I mean, they're called hyperheat systems. Um, you know, I, I've, I have three of these systems in my own house and they provide heating and air conditioning. So until recently, I didn't even know that these systems come with heat only. So I am very confused at this point about the specifications for the systems, to be honest with you. Um, I do know what the architect has recommended. Um, and I just don't, I don't feel that I've, I have clarity on whether the system only provides heat or provides air conditioning as well. I mean, will the system heat the space and also in warmer weather, condition the space, move the air around so that it removes the humidity? I, I don't know. I don't know, I'm very confused. I believe it's been my understanding from the beginning that both systems would do both of those things. Yes. I believe the first system is just heat. What? I believe the first system, the less expensive system is just heat. I don't believe that's true at all. That's, that's this. To do it while we find out whether that's right. Why, why don't, look, instead of losing more time, why don't we go with our building superintendent's recommendation? 
You it don't have sense. enough money to get it done right now, unless you can find it. Margaret? I I want to better understand, I need to better understand what the, what the units do. Uh, is one just larger than the other? Sure. Um, I'm happy to, yeah. Um, I, I think the bottom line here is that we need both heating and cooling. Um, if, if we can determine that the uh, less expensive unit will cool as well, because it was my understanding that it did both also, um, then I think we, then I would uh, favor just going with the less expensive unit, but it does need to cool and we need, wouldn't Northboro Oil, a call to Northboro Oil um, determine that? Okay. Um, in Margaret's note to David, <laughs> following up, it now appears the less expensive unit doesn't have air conditioning. Please confirm that is the case. Dave, David's response, yes, this is true. I am more than happy to call Northboro Oil on behalf of the Historical Commission for the specs on each of the systems because they gave us a proposal, but not the specs. So if I could just get the specs or I could go, these are both Mitsubishi units and I could actually go on the Mitsubishi site. I'd, I'd much prefer to hear directly from Northboro Oil, but I could go on the Mitsubishi site and look up the engineering specs on these to see we could do. We're not technical people. <laughs> David is, Northboro Oil is. He, he proposed the second system because he felt that was right for the building. On the contrary, he proposed the second system because you requested him to. I asked him to do what he felt was right for the building. I, asked, I didn't ask him to do one or the other, I asked him to do both. And that's what the second system is. I think because there is, um, a lot of confusion. I think that we are entitled to call Northboro Oil and have them confirm that it, it either is a, a conditioning system, an air conditioning system or not. That, that would make me reassured. You don't trust our building superintendent knowledge? There's never a, a do not. to me, there's never a problem with getting a second opinion. I, I, I don't think it's a matter of trusting the, the, um, the highway superintendent or not. I think having the specs, um, having the specs in hand, knowing exactly what the unit does, um, to me, they're both mini split systems. So uh, to have the specs in hand to know what they do and to have that understanding, I think can only, can only help. Um, I, I do trust our highway and facilities superintendent, but I also would like to see the specifications. I don't have my phone book handy, so I can't tell them. What I mentioned this morning in an email is that one thing I don't want to get into. What I what I prefer that the historical commission not to have not have to get into, is a situation where there is no conditioning of the air in warmer temperatures, and you'd be you'd have to put in some sort of dehumidifier and fans. I mean, you don't want to get into that. You want the system to be able to handle, um, you know, the moisture control, the heating, um, and the the air conditioning. So. That's, that's why I sent that email this morning. That was what our understanding was in the first place with the original proposal that came in from the- Mary? Uh, yeah, what Mary, number? Mary? Yeah, what number? Mary, Northboro Oil is 508. Oh, you want me to get them, see if I can get them on the phone and into this call? Well, no. 393. Oh, okay, he's doing it, okay. 5200. I think I will- um, the five two hundred. I have Northboro oil is five zero eight three nine three. 
6,200. 6,200? Yeah. Or, yes. My mom would paddle me. She heard me say, yeah. <laughs> Need the number again, Barry? No. All right. I just made a mistake entering it the first time. Uh, good morning. This is Barry Agar with Berlin. Is um, is call available? Um, I was looking for a, a word on what systems would do, so I don't know who else I could talk to. So I guess I'll have to call them back. Um, is that likely to be soon or not? Okay. Um, seven, seven, four, two, four, five, four, one, four, five. Thank you. Bye-bye. No, Paul's not available right now. I don't know who else there could answer it, so I can't very well ask. Usually in the office, he's the one, the only one that can do this kind of stuff. Um, I've never had this, I, I, from the beginning of this whole thing, dealing with Athabit and everything else, I've always understood that, that this system would, would do cooling as well as he is. June. Well, Asabet did steer us to a problem that doesn't didn't exist according to the architect, which was that it wouldn't it wouldn't operate below zero, and so that that makes me want substantiation from two different sources. Oh yeah, I know. I'm, I'm not unwilling that we need to find that it, this we need to know this before we enter into it. Um, that okay. being, we'll pass over and go on to the next thing. So we know the answer to that. Um, um, I don't think I, I haven't heard anything new in regard to the uh, uh, structure survey. Has anyone else? Yes, I received an update from Tim because I I contacted him again. He okay. says he has it burned in his brain that the <laughs> deadline <laughs> that the deadline for the structural survey and the final report is December six. So he says he is on it. Okay. And he's, he's got the keys and as far as I know, he's got what he needs and hopefully he'll let us know if he doesn't. Uh, we've continued to do a little bit more at the bullet house and trying to continue to clean things and move things around, get things out if we can. And now that we're, uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that, I, I've got to talk to Dave Smith about the, um, fire station business, but if we can start moving stuff in there, we can start taking some things out of the bullet house that would go over there, like the door collection and stuff. And um, I have, uh, well, I don't, that's all I have to say about the bullet house right now. Um, June? Um, could we get somebody to move the two toilets um, to wherever they, to the dump or wherever they would take them? Yeah. Can we pay for that um, out of our commission money or? Well, if we have to. Um, yeah. Can we have the highway department remo remove them? Well, that's another possibility. Yeah, we can work on getting that done this month. How, how um, do you want me to call them and ask or, I mean, it's, it's a detail and I'm willing to take responsibility for it because they're just too heavy for me or you or any of us to move. Oh, well, I've moved them before. <laughs> I know, but now we're older. 
Fine, go ahead. Uh, excuse me, through the chair. Yeah. I am looking at the specifications for the Mitsubishi MUZGL24NA-U1 uh, on uh, the website. And it does appear that it do, it cools. It appears that it cools and heats. So confirmation would be great, but from my from my reading of it, it does have cooling capacity. Yeah. Good. Good. June. If if we are um, all um, satisfied that it does heat and cool. Can we ask the select board to approve um, our use of this uh, donation from the Berlin Art and Historical Society to purchase, to pay for the $4,500 unit? That's a motion. Oh, that's a motion, okay. Or some sort of consensus to be taken. We have a motion to proceed with the lesser unit if we, with the understand we still have need of select men's okay and historical society, so forth. But we hopefully we can get those within a few days. Uh, select men will meet the net this week, this next week. I'm sorry. I, I found the spec sheet. I'm so excited. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I was distracted. Board is going to be meeting on the 26th. Yes. Okay. All uh, right. Is there a second to June's motion? Second. Motion made and seconded. Um, that would go with the uh, elevator project money plus uh, the gift through the historical society. Is there anything further to be said on that motion? Hearing none, I'll I'll call for a vote. I'll vote aye. Igor aye. June aye. Karen aye. Elaine, no. Motion carries three to one. Are we done with this one? Uh, we we will get the okays and then we will call. Then we will give Northboro Oil the okay to proceed, and make sure that they're they're. Um, since we're not very far past the deadline on their uh, on their quote, that they will honor that quote. Yes, June. And we do need Northboro Oil to state that it is a heating and cooling unit. Yes. Yeah, we will put that condition. Uh, I will, if it is agreeable, we will put that in the, as part of that last vote. Karen, are you comfortable with that? Adding that, making, assuring that they agree that it is both eating and cooling. But I, I would certainly want them to confirm it. I would also uh, go a little bit further and ask them if the size of that unit will take care of that building. And I don't know if that's part of the difference with the, the two proposals to begin with. Um, so yeah, I would just want to confirm all of that before we move forward. But if, this, if the less expensive uh, model does it, then I would go for that. Okay, June. They didn't want to offer an opinion the last time. Well, I know. That's so they. Asked, that's why we asked David. And why did they not even, want to offer an opinion? What What's the issue? They didn't want to get in the middle of a controversy. I've run into this before, uh, dealing for the church and. So for sometimes you deal with purveyors and uh, if you have a, a disagreement going on in, in an organization or, a, or a, a government body or whatever, that people are trying to get them to take a side in that controversy and they don't want to get into that kind of stuff. 
So, well, maybe yeah. the specifications, however, um, at least give you an idea of, of uh, the area that that a unit will be able to to service. June? I think the architect and the engineers for Austin Design have laid that to rest. The, the um, you only asked them about the uh, one unit, though. Did you? Did you no, the they had proposals for both units, and oh, they didn't, and they didn't. my my. Um, what my inquiry really was to confirm the adequacy of the 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 lesser you you know the the less the expensive unit. unit and if not we I mean I didn't <laughs> I didn't ask them to promote anything I just wanted to know if what they had designed was adequate and they confirmed that. But they did have both. But I did present to them that the two the two estimates, and that we had before us uh, two units to consider. I'm pretty sure that was clear in my email to them both times. Well, the key thing is that we had professional people, the architect and their consulting engineer, that recommended the original installation so we had experts involved in that at that level in that time so i and this was what how many years ago was that going back to them to get that confirmed how many years ago was that the original five i don't know i'd, I'd have to go maybe back five the plans as much as five years five or less a uh, less, yeah. It certainly was. Uh, it certainly would be about three years ago when they were completing the plans for the project. If if Northboro Oils is willing to give their opinion, that's fine. They just weren't before. I I just want them to substantiate that it is a cooling unit as well as a heating unit just just because Dave Smith has said that it's not a cooling unit and I do want him to be satisfied oh sure for the chair I just sent I just sent all of you um, the board and Dave the specs for both of those outdoor condensing units that were quoted by Northboro oil okay okay Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to move on to other business at this point, I think. Um, in regard to the collection, um, I've moved a couple of dozen of those big garment boxes up to the new building. And I'm going to continue to work on getting those moved um, because that'll get a lot of the bulk out of the way for the move. And that's they all go upstairs on one side away from where all this other work will be done. So I think it will be all right to get those up there. Um, and it will greatly reduce the amount of volume to be moved later. And we can do it piecemeal as we go. I also, um, we will. It, once we have the system done, and even perhaps once we have the installations started or arranged, then we can start packing up books and things out of the bookcases so that they can be moved. Um, and then we'll, again, we'll move it in, in two or three ways, as we did when we moved the stuff down to the town offices before. Um, June, do you want to comment at all about uh, some of the listing work and stuff we've been doing? Uh, we, first we have taken from the board house uh, items that really needed to be protected. Um, 
this is from the upstairs small room as you get to the top of the stairs. And I believe we're, we're just about done with listing those. Now they're being listed in a binder by hand uh, by both of us at this point. Um, there are still, there are still uh, other things in the bullet house that should be listed, but we're, we're just doing it as much as we can every single week. Um, we still have items in room 113 that are not listed. Uh, and we'll, we'll just we'll work on that too. Um, this is a paper. Lot that, a lot of those are things that have come in relatively recently. Well, this year, I, I don't think we've accepted anything. Well, I haven't accepted anything except some paper from Linda Nelson uh, this fall. Uh, but that's a minor thing and that's already been done. I already listed that. Um, and we have been talking a bit about the, about a policy though we haven't, uh, you know, we're, that's still in process. Um, yes, Margaret. Oh, thank you, Barry. Um, so I just wanted to, I, and you're already talking about this, but the board um, has asked <clears throat> for clarification um, from the commission about whether a policy on, um, you know, building the collection or what items the uh, historical commission will accept, why, what items will the historical commission not accept. So I just wanted to pass that along that the board has asked that specific question about building that plan. So just conveying that to you. I think that um, while we would address that matter, it's pretty hard to create policy for some of it because you never know what will get offered. And sometimes you get offered things that are quite different than you'd imagined before, and therefore you've got to deal with those. Um, uh, we have recently received, and I still don't know from whence, left it by the front of the building uh, up at the curatorial was a large door, the condition of which is not good enough so that I think we should keep it. And uh, it's been out in the weather and it's got veneers coming off of it and so forth. And its style is not sufficiently interesting for, from my point of view for us to want, especially considering some of the other things we already have that are much better. Um, but there is also a pair of side lights, uh, windows for either side of like the front door, which did come, which were there too. And while they're in a, a bit rough in terms of being a lot of old paint and stuff, uh, those are interesting and we don't have anything like that right now. So I really think those are, are very good, but I, um, the door is not, I, I would refuse it and I if we don't find out from whence it came we will just get it just discard it that's all June where was it left right at, at, at the front of the curatorial building with no 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 nothing and that has just happened this week so I mean that's the kind of stuff that we have to occasionally deal with and and then we the first thing is some detective work to see if we can find out where it came from, because needless to say, it's important to us as to whether it's something we want as to whether it's local and what building it came out of and so that we can hopefully ascertain something about its age and so on. Um, it's not much use otherwise. So we'll, uh, we'll continue, continue to work on that. But um, as I say, the door, the condition of the door is bad enough so that I don't see it as a, a valid thing for us. And I think we should get rid, we'll, we'll, we'll proceed to get rid of it. Um, the other thing is that in developing a policy, we include the uh, custodial committee of the historical society, which has traditionally done most of the work anyway on the collection and uh, a way for the uh, commission to establish policy and have a lot of the work actually carried out by the, um, custodial committee. 
um, that's uh, an, another that's an aspect of that policy that we uh, that we'll develop and and bring for a future uh, approval and actually bring for constructive discussion before we just bring it for approval. I think that's it's something we want to um, have everybody involved in it as it develops. Um, are there other collection matters to be considered at this point? Um, another thing that I will say is that the Bullet House acquiring the building uh, changed our collection uh, situation quite a bit because suddenly we needed to have things like furniture, at least some, to put in the house. And so we've collected some furniture. I would say right now that while I won't say we'll never collect any more furniture, we certainly are not looking to collect a lot more furniture because we've, we've got kind of enough for now. At some point, we may certainly consider some things that could come in that it would be a different style or period or family that we might take some of. But we're not looking to have a lot more furniture because we've got, at this point, quite a bit that will give us some variety and, and we don't necessarily need a lot more. Um, because furniture takes up a lot of space, that's another thing that we want to be very careful about in terms of taking more of. Taking more paper is not too big a problem because you can put more in the file cabinet and you know, get maybe one more file cabinet and continue to collect that stuff. But large items uh, certainly are an issue because they, they create the need for storage space. Uh, the other thing is that uh, trying to operate a, mu a local museum, you've got to be careful that you deal with things that are both local and that are uh, indicative of, of life of another in another period of the town's history that would be interesting and important to others. Um, we'll, uh, but we'll we'll work on all of that as we develop the policy for that. Um, I also put on the agenda of demolition delay and preservation issues because those are things that we should always keep on our general agenda. I, I have made a, a generic agenda, which is required in order to put a meeting onto our town government, my town government, and I've developed one that is listed for all the upcoming meetings through the next year. Um, and then each month, as we come up a few in the last week before the meeting, we get a prompt to update the agenda and put specifics in as I did with the HVAC and so forth this month. Um, the, I did have a building permit come before me. Um, which was for an addition to a house on Gates Pond Road. Uh, the house is one that's been built in no more than about 20 years ago, 25 years, 20, 25 years ago. And therefore I okayed it as going on because it that isn't old enough for the demolition delay by law to be affected by it. Um, and most of the things that come uh, in those building permits are precisely that. Uh, they're not, um, they're on in situations that do not apply to the demolition delay bylaw. Uh, demolition delay bylaw only deals with things that are 50 years old or more. And I can honestly say I'm beginning to wonder if 50 years old is is the right number because uh, 50 years ago is now 1970. <laughs> and the 1950s and 60s and 70s was a period that we had all kinds of buildings built in Berlin. Relatively few of them were distinctive in, uh, in terms of being unusual. I mentioned something like Sally Bergen's house of 1955, which is um, a, a, an inter interesting architect designed house, which um, was, it represents an important style thing. But most of the rest are, are pretty common and and we could find ourselves having to deal with an awful lot of them uh, if we um, 
as, as we have any building permits for modifications of houses built in the 60s and 70s and 80s. So I think that um, at some point we may want to change that 50 year thing uh, to a little to an earlier time, but um, that's that's a, a a broader discussion we can have sometime. A uh, second preservation thing that came up is a letter from the Massachusetts Historical Commission uh, dated October 5th to Jennifer Cermak at 200 Central Street. She's the lady that has Berlin Farms. Mm -hmm. uh, and she had apparently uh, communicated with them to submit it as a for a national register listing for the old house there. And it's a mid 19th century Greek revival house in the big barn. Uh, barn would be a little later than the house, I think. Uh, though the small house, which is the part where the ice cream is sold on the on the west side, is a um, is an earlier house, perhaps in the from the 1700s. And uh, however much modified. And um, let me read just a couple of statements in it. While the primary elevations of the complex retain a historic interconnected farmstead appearance from Central Street, as well as some original details inside the main farmhouse building, including door and window trim, staircase and mantelpieces, our evaluation determined that modifications to the complex within the past 40 years, including replacement windows, significant renovations of the little house and back house, and the addition of the large apple barn render the property ineligible for listing in the National Register of Historic Places, which does not surprise, this does not surprise me because that, you know, there's so many things attached to it that are much bigger and, and um, almost overwhelm the original building. However, interesting comments. Farmsteads can be difficult to list in the National Register as agricultural practices change over time and a switch in focus can require modifications to buildings or the addition of buildings that impact or remove character defining features and diminish historic integrity. We encourage you to come back for evaluation once the apple barn and other resources added in the 1980s, as well as modifications made in that decade, are approaching 50 years old, as by then those changes reflecting the continued agricultural use of the property may be considered historic. <laughs> so in other words, give it about 10 years, and when those things are coming up so that they're, they're getting close to 50 years old, we might, we might consider it. I thought that was a, a rather interesting letter and one that everybody should be aware of. Uh, occasionally we get letters like that. Uh, the other kind of letter that we get frequently, and I should say not frequently, occasionally, is a letter from the Historical Commission relating to some kind of a construction project by the, you know, like a road construction project or something like that, and what its potential effects might be and their attraction. Sometimes a letter like that will come with a request that we comment on it. And some, and needless to say, if we're going to comment on it, that would come before the commission so that uh, we all agree that what our comment would be. Um, but I, I did want to bring that to your attention because it's, it's recent correspondence. Um, June. Um, could we make a copy so I can put it with the minutes? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll, uh, well, it'll be going over to go in the file over to the town offices anyway. So I'll, uh, when it gets over there, I'll make a copy for you for the minute. Okay. I think I've covered the uh, agenda that I had. Are there other things to be added? the chair <laughs> just me again um so in the event that the historical society is unable to make a donation and you say that the, that it will be 
I have plugged a placeholder article on the special town meeting warrant as a just in case thing mm -hmm. for the additional funding that would be needed. Okay, so um, I know the board looks forward to hearing um, from you on that on that donation, in which case we could um, remove that that article. Okay. Uh, that article does not have a, a number in it, does it? It does. The article itself would not have an, a number in it. The motion would actually That's combine it. the balance and any other additional funding source. That way we can revise it as it needs to be if that, if it comes to Yes. Be. Right. Right. I'm hopeful it won't come to that because I'd like to be getting the work done before that. Um, other, other comments or matters to come before us today? Uh, Karen. I just wanted to uh, confirm that I, uh, you sent me the ledger from the town accountant. She emailed it to me. So yeah. I filled it out and uh, sent it back to, um, to the accountant. So hopefully now I'll be in her email chain. Yeah. So that was done for October. Uh, I'd like to suggest, Karen, that you call the accountant's office mm -hmm. and request that they send those to you by email each month or each time it's coming out because then they'll get it right to you and you can take care of it right well i made a notation when i emailed this form um, back to them um so if i don't get it um you know in november i will okay. just contact them directly oh that's super Okay. I think that sometimes having having the person that's doing it uh, uh, speak to them will help to make it happen. Right. But thank you, June, for uh, emailing it to me. You're welcome. Yeah. And I will say that our, our budgeted money this year, um, you know, in the process of doing the move and all of that, we may have some odd expenses that we decide to spend out of that um, as the year progresses. Uh, Margaret, did you have something? There's, else? Yeah, there's one other article placeholder on the draft warrant for the Bullard House, only to expand the scope that was voted um, at the prior town meeting to include surveys and engineering and design. June uh, Poland, the accountant, asked for that, just to be clear that the structural survey is included in this work, okay? Okay. Uh, everybody get the point on that. The, the previous vote of the town was for renovations, and uh, this was this is to include the planning cost as well. Anybody else? If there are no other matters to come before us, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Uh, Agar, aye. June, aye. Karen, aye. Plain, aye. Motion passes unanimously. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you all.